for your first online lesson and for the duration of the online lessons at least for these two weeks we're going to see this topic rotated conic sections why well just because it's another use of the trig functions and uh, it's going to have to do with something that we can manipulate algebraically so it's not just the angles in abstract it's going to be um, related to some equations that we can manipulate easier than just thinking about angles and by rotated conic sections I mean remember the conic sections are ellipses, hyperbolas, parabolas and circles and rotated mean that well they are rotated in instead of the usual form you have ellipses like this one in which the axes have been rotated you don't have the regular set of axes perpendicular to each other forming like a cross it's rotated a little bit in this case 60 degrees this is a hyperbola that it's also been rotated this is the regular parabola and this is a rotated parabola so these things are the ones that we're going to be describing but before we do that I want you to remember the regular equations and graphs for the conic sections just in the regular way without being rotated by any angle circle ellipses hyperbolas and parabolas so here I have put uh, the important parameters of each one of the conic sections and the definition try to read it I'm just gonna focus now on like sh describing the shape maybe one or two points and the equation okay also I'm assuming that you already know this because we've seen this before we saw this last year so circle you know the circle well it has a center if it's not on the origin it has coordinates HK and then it also has a radius those are just the two important parameters that make up the circle and appear on the equation the equation looks like this x minus again something if the center is not on the origin square plus y minus k square equals radius square the important thing to notice in this equation is that all quantities are positive because this thing is square this thing is square equals radius square and here you have a plus so this part of the equation is going to be positive this thing over here is going to be positive and this coefficient over here is going to be positive and also both coefficients have to be the same for the equation to represent the circle okay so circle both coefficients the same positive both variables squared okay ellipse again please read the important parameters in the definition but this is the shape of the ellipse looks like a squeezed circle somehow and the equation is pretty similar you have the x and y variables squared but in this case they can be multiplied or divided by some of the numbers those factors have to be positive but they have to also be different if they are equal you don't have an ellipse you have a circle they have to be positive and different to call what you have there an ellipse okay hyperbola the hyperbola equation is actually pretty similar to the ellipse one but notice that in here in the ellipse you have all things positive again and in the hyperbola you might have negative things actually you have one negative thing it can be the x or it can be the y the coefficient I mean so if you again find your two variables x and y squared multiplied or divided by factors different that they are not equal among like between themselves and one of the two variables has a minus it's negative then what you have there is a hyperbola and of course the graph of the hyperbola looks like this is the only one that it's two branched it has two branches it, that do not connect between each other it's the easy one to spot and finally the parabola the parabola is the easiest one of them to spot for at least speaking about the graph because I'm sorry about the equation 
because the, in the equation you only have one of the two variables squared. In this case, for instance, the x is the one that is squared, and this one is the y, and that's it. So you don't have to look for anything else. If you have x's and y's, but only one of them is squared, what you have there is a parabola. And the graph looks like this. It, you can get it confused with the graph of the hyperbola, but remember that the parabola has only one branch. It's only just this, or this, or this, or this, but it's only one. But in the hyperbola, you have the two of them, always. Okay? Well, that's it.